My name is Mauricio Ginestra. I'm 26 years old and I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis four years ago. My plans before I was diagnosed with MS were the typical plans everyone has. Grow professionally in my job, eventually get married, have kids, when I started feeling symptoms, I was in Caracas, back home in Venezuela, and uh, I was working. One day I woke up and my right eye started feeling stiff. It started bothering me. I started having double vision. I was feeling tired all day, and I decided to go to the doctor. Antes del diagnóstico de Mauricio, conocía la enfermedad porque mi mejor amiga de la infancia pues, fue diagnosticada con MS y fue la verdad es que eso me ayudó muchísimo a, a, a comprender un poco cuando mi hermano fue diagnosticado a comprender un poco sobre la enfermedad. Simply put, multiple sclerosis is usually thought of as a, a, an illness where people have neuro, certain neurological difficulties that appear and then disappear. Besides the right eye being stiff and being in pain the whole time, I, was, I had also headaches, terrible headaches every day. I was really tired and sometimes my feet and my hands were numb, were feeling numb. But I didn't pay attention to that because I, I thought I was just being so tired because of my work and everything and stress that I never thought it could be something as serious as it was. When he told me that I might have a brain tumor, that was the moment that I've been the most scared in my entire life. Because when they tell you something like that, that you realize that you could be close to close to dying and I started shaking, I didn't know what to do. Sentí miedo, sentí temor, sentí angustia de no saber qué iba a pasar. My biggest fear when I met the doctor, after he explained what it was and what could happen to me, was that it happened to me. That I could be paralyzed, that I could be deaf, that I could be mute, that, that my life would start to be a, a, like a burden to my family and to everyone else. I didn't want that. I've never wanted that and that scared me a lot. Nos unió mucho más, hicimos esto una causa común y la causa común siempre fue apoyar y darle fuerzas a, a Mauricio en todo momento, pues desde mis padres, mi, mi, mi otro hermano, el, mi hermano mayor, Javier, eh, pues siempre, siempre tuvimos esa causa común. When it all started, I was, uh, I thought that no one could understand me on earth. So there were times when I went to church, like a Tuesday at four o'clock in the afternoon, and I just sat down and prayed and, and prayed and prayed and talked to God because I, I thought he was the only one that could get me. No one else could. Mi reacción cuando Mauricio eh, fue diagnosticado con MS eh, fue muy eh, desconcertante, me sentí muy, muy confundida, eh, no, no, no teníamos claro pues, qué, qué iba a pasar con él, cómo se iba a sentir, si iba a progresar, eh, pues de verdad que fue una situación muy confusa y muy, 
muy devastadora en el primer, mo en, en, en el, en el primer momento, la primera reacción. Multiple sclerosis was definitely a reason I decided to move to Miami. But it wasn't only that. I, I started rethinking my life and what I wanted to do with it. And uh, that's why I decided to move and to start over and to change everything with me. Mauricio, since I met him, like he didn't show any evidence of uh, any illness or any anomaly in his system. He, he was actually, since the beginning, very, very normal to me, I guess. Besides my sister's friend who lives in Houston, I don't know anybody in Miami with multiple sclerosis. I was diagnosed in 1994, January of 1994, about 15 years ago. I have a progressive form of MS called secondary progressive. Well, neurologists nowadays talk about four different kinds of multiple sclerosis. The most common is relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis, which the vast majority of patients present with. And a portion of those patients will develop secondary progressive multiple sclerosis. Secondary progressive multiple sclerosis is a disease where people get worse between attacks. The symptoms were different from now because originally being diagnosed, I was diagnosed with optic neuritis and then I started progressively getting worse. But after my second child, I got dramatically worse. I've been through the whole process. I was depressed, I was in denial, and I was angry, yeah, of course. And I think everyone has to go through those steps to overcome the, the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Because if you don't, you, you remain in that denial and that's not helpful. I was in denial at first, when I was first diagnosed, because I'm thinking, there's gotta be something else. There's, and I, I was actually, kind of hoping that it was a brain tumor because I thought they might be able to take it out. When I was diagnosed, I felt that I was losing control of my life because I was living by myself. I had a work, I, I had a life by myself and my family moved back to my house in Caracas, in Venezuela. And uh, it's, it all started changing for me, yeah. I felt that I, that I lost control of my life. I think we feel like we're losing control of our life pretty much, I'm hoping, all of us, all the time. But I feel like I'm losing control when, when things happen that I, that I forget that I can't do. Like, I was gonna bring the kids to the beach and I realized, wait a second, I can't get to the water by myself. I can't go to the beach by myself and I can't bring my kids and their friends. But I'll find a way, and I did. I, find, I found a way to get the, the big, it's almost like a hovercraft to the beach, but, but you know, there, there was a lot of planning. Of course it worries me that my children might inherit MS. When they first told me that I had it, that was my first concern. So when I have children, are they gonna get it? I was very concerned when we first had my, um, when I was first pregnant with my daughter, I felt great. And whatever it is, and I've heard that before with MS, that during pregnancy is like, is like a cure. And so one woman who has eight children, I think, posted on a website one time that, that I found the cure, eight kids. I haven't encountered any mental obstacles. Maybe telling people at the beginning that I have multiple sclerosis and deciding who to tell and who not to tell, but that's about it. Uh, when he told me that he had the, the illness, I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if I should be in shock or if I should be, hey, that's okay, you know. Uh, 
nothing's gonna happen to you because I didn't know. Right now, I have seen him. He's thriving. He's a amazing student, amazing worker. He has a perf an amazing life, and he, having MS has not obstructed him from developing any type of passion that he wants to have in his life. After I was diagnosed, I've met people that I've learned from, I've met people that have made me cry, that have made a big impact in my life. And in some way, I have to thank multiple sclerosis for that. The fact that Mauricio has MS has never changed anything. He's my friend, we do everything together. We hang out, we party, we go to the beach, we do everything. We've been friends for a while and I really can't say that he's any different from my other really close friends. He's a really good friend. The medicine I take for my multiple sclerosis is interferon. I inject it three times a week and it's something that tries to set back the progress of the disease. Los medicamentos han avanzado muchísimo. Hay una, eh, pues los tratamientos son de son de, de alta eficacia en este momento y pues los estudios no paran, las investigaciones siguen y nosotros tenemos muchísima fe y muchísima eh, pues eh, esperanza de que muy pronto va a venir la la cura de la enfermedad. There is new drugs coming on board, which I'm excited about. There is going to be a tablet. Uh, just think about it. instead of an injection every day or an injection every other day or or it's going to be just one tablet that you take in the morning like a, like an aspirin or whatever and it will be controlling your multiple sclerosis. My outlook on life has changed in a way that I don't take things for granted anymore. I appreciate people and what they do for me and why they appeared in my life and I take those things very seriously and when your life changes like that you start rethinking all those plans and you see that they're not your priority anymore and you go with it. When I was diagnosed it all started being more clear. I started sharing more with the people I love. I started being much closer to my family which I've always been very close to and I've started learning a lot about myself. La familia nuestra siempre ha sido, pienso yo, muy unida, una familia llena de amor, de de comprensión, pues de comunicación. Siempre hemos sido muy muy abiertos, muy comunicativos y y sobre todo amor. Patient families, what they should do is more understanding for the patient themselves. What they should really know is get to know the disease and uh, the symptoms that these patients have. Porque pensamos que El 95% de esta enfermedad se lleva con apoyo, con fortaleza y con amor de la familia. I've never been afraid of telling people that I have a mess. I'm constantly addressing um, being public with the illness because I'm around so many people, so many parents of my kids. Some know, some don't. So it's difficult because their perception is varies widely. After people get to know me, they know that I'm a regular guy, that I do everything, that I have a normal life, that I've studied a lot, that I had two degrees, that I've done a lot with my life, and that I have this disease that I can control. And if that helps someone else achieve their goals and realize that it's not hard, whatever you're going through, then it's, it's great, and that's a really empowering feeling for me. This has definitely been a learning experience, meeting Mauricio and his condition. We've been through a couple ups and downs and I have really become aware and very inspired by his life. He taught me to, to understand who I am and who, who are those around me, my friends, my family. We take things for granted sometimes and, and we don't see it and it's, it's just right there in front of us. The next step for me is getting married, working a lot, having kids, 
having a successful, happy life that I can have regardless of my condition. Después de toda nuestra experiencia vivida con Mauricio, le diría que como 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 estuviera pues eh, desde la lesión más leve hasta el episodio más fuerte, que tenga mucha fe, que sí se puede, que sí se puede salir adelante y que sí se puede recuperar. A message to people with a mess or who just found out he or she has a mess. Uh, it will be just to keep a positive attitude towards life. Uh, Mauricio had taught me that it's not the end of the world. There's a good thing out there. There's a good thing out there for everybody. It's just a matter of looking. And looking at the positive and looking at the goodness. And if, you, you know, if you're struggling one day, just know the best thing about that is that tomorrow will probably be better. So there's always a hope. It came to you because for some reason you're the one chosen to, to tell something to people, you know? It's, it makes you different, it makes you in some way special. That's how I see it. I would tell someone that just found out they had a mess that it's not that difficult and that you have a way out and that you can be fine and that you're not gonna die, that it's not the end of the world, you know? That, that was what made me so afraid at the beginning. And I thought that it was the end for me. But it isn't, so you can deal with it. And for some reason, God sent this to us. So I think it's because we're really strong people and we can deal with this and it's gonna be fine. It's, it's, it's no biggie for us. Best. So I can you be a good friend. Okay, good, good, good. good. You, you have good you. ones. Oh, thanks. You have good ones. Yeah. I want to be in your support group. Of course. We'll start our own support group. Of course, why not? We should. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. I wanted to thank you. Let us be here and to let me know you and it's been really helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. I feel like there aren't any coincidences in life. Of course. And I think it's a, it's a great thing that you came. I, I had a lot of other things to probably do and I could have pushed it off again and thought, oh, no, I don't need to be, be talked to today, but I'm so glad I met you. Thank you. Thank you You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I got a hug out of it. <laughs>